The night was thick with an otherworldly silence as I stumbled upon an abandoned mall, its faded sign barely visible under the pale glow of a flickering streetlight. Intrigued, and perhaps driven by a morbid curiosity, I decided to explore the eerie, desolate corridors within. The entrance door groaned in protest as I pushed it open, revealing a dimly lit atrium. The air inside was stale, a mixture of dust and memories long forgotten. The escalators stood frozen in time, their once shiny surfaces now corroded and lifeless. The only sound was the echo of my own hesitant footsteps against the cold, tiled floor. I ventured deeper, drawn to the ghostly storefronts that whispered tales of commerce long extinct. Mannequins stood frozen in macabre poses, their lifeless eyes following my every move. The abandoned shops exuded a sense of longing, as if the spirits of commerce refused to accept their demise. As I reached the center of them all, a strange disorientation took hold. The boundaries between reality and the surreal blurred. Shadows danced on the walls, creating grotesque shapes that seemed to watch me with an inscrutable malevolence. A distant hum, like a ghostly lament, reverberated through the empty halls. I turned a corner and found myself facing an old-fashioned carousel, its chipped paint revealing the passage of countless forgotten seasons. The haunting melody of a music box echoed through the air, though the source remained elusive. The carousel spun slowly, its skeletal horses moving in a macabre dance of abandonment. Suddenly, the temperature dropped, and an icy chill gripped the air. Whispers echoed in the emptiness, indistinct yet foreboding. Panic set in as I realized I was no longer alone. Shadows slithered along the walls, whispering secrets of a time when this place was alive with the laughter of shoppers and the rustle of bags. In the surreal liminality of that forsaken mall, I felt a presence watching me from the periphery. A figure materialized in the corner of my vision, a silhouette with hollow eyes that seemed to pierce through the fabric of my soul. My heart pounded as the phantom figure glided toward me, its movements soundless but deliberate. I fled, the spectral whispers growing louder, the shadows closing in. The exit door beckoned like a portal to salvation, and I burst into the night, gasping for breath. The abandoned mall loomed behind me, a relic of a bygone era that refused to be forgotten. To this day, I cannot shake the feeling that something lingers in these desolate halls, a malevolent force trapped in the liminal space between the living and the long departed. And as the night falls, I still hear the haunting melody of the carousel, a distant reminder of the phantoms that dwell within the forgotten corridors of that spectral mall. The night was oppressive, and a dense fog clung to the deserted train station like a shroud. I stood on the platform, the only living soul in a realm where time seemed frozen, the air heavy with the weight of the past. The flickering overhead lights cast long shadows that danced eerily across the empty tracks. As I ventured further into the desolation, the rhythmic creaking of the swinging station sign echoed through the silence. The waiting area was filled with cracked plastic chairs, remnants of a time when commuters bustled in and out, their chatter drowning out the haunting whispers that now lingered in the air. A distant train whistle cut through the stillness, a phantom sound from an era where locomotives roared to life. But the platform remained empty, devoid of life or movement. The windows of the abandoned ticket booth reflected the pale glow of the station lights, distorting the world outside into a surreal tapestry of shadows and mystery. I approached the edge of the platform and peered into the abyss of the tracks below. A chill ran down my spine as I imagined the ghostly echoes of a train's arrival, the disembodied footsteps of passengers long gone. The darkness between the tracks seemed to swallow the feeble glow of the phantom lights, concealing secrets untold. I turned my attention to the desolate tunnels that stretched into the distance, a labyrinth of forgotten passages where the echoes of footsteps passed lingered like lost souls. The walls seemed to close in, adorned with graffiti that told stories of rebellion and decay. A cold gust of wind whispered through the tunnels, carrying with it the ghostly laughter of a bygone era. As I navigated the maze of abandoned platforms, a sense of disorientation set in. The boundaries between reality and the spectral blurred, and I found myself trapped in a maze of flickering lights and mysterious sounds. Shadows danced on the walls, assuming shapes that seemed to mock the living. A distant murmur reached my ears, a symphony of whispers that rose and fell like a sinister tide. I followed the ghostly sound, drawn deeper into the heart of the abandoned station. The air became thick with an unspoken malevolence, and the shadows coalesced into indistinct figures that seemed to move with a purpose. In the heart of the station, I stumbled upon an old clock frozen in time. Its hands pointed to a moment that had ceased to exist, a perpetual midnight that seemed to mock the passage of time. The whispers crescendoed, 
and the shadows converged into a spectral congregation that surrounded me with a suffocating presence. As the whispers reached a fevered pitch, the air became charged with an otherworldly energy. The shadows writhed, and I felt an unseen force envelop me. In that liminal space between the living and the forsaken, I realized I was not alone. The station had become a purgatory for the spirits of those who once traveled its rails. A distant wail echoed through the tunnels, the mournful cry of a phantom train that never arrived. Panic seized me, and I fled the haunted station, the whispers and shadows fading behind me. But even as I escaped into the night, the ghostly echoes of the abandoned train lingered, a testament to the restless spirits trapped in the liminality of that forsaken place. It was an ordinary Tuesday evening when my car sputtered to a stop on the desolate stretch of highway. The gas gauge had betrayed me, and I found myself stranded in the eerie quiet of an abandoned roadside rest area. The flickering, buzzing overhead lights cast an uneasy glow over the empty parking spaces. I stepped out of my car into the cool night air, the silence broken only by the distant hum of passing vehicles on the highway. The vending machines by the restroom stood silent and neglected, their neon lights dimmed and their once colorful buttons faded from years of neglect. I approached the empty picnic area, where rustling tables and benches were surrounded by an encroaching sea of weeds. The wind whispered through the desolation, carrying with it the forgotten echoes of family picnics and laughter that had long since faded away. As I wandered further into the rest area, the darkness seemed to envelop me. The solitary lampposts, their dull glow struggling against the encroaching night, cast long shadows that stretched across the cracked pavement. The air was heavy with the scent of damp grass and decay. I found a payphone near the edge of the rest area, a relic of a time when these stops were a lifeline for travelers in need. The phone dangled by its cord, the receiver cracked and stained with the passage of countless hands. I hesitated, contemplating whether to dial for assistance or continue my journey on foot. In the distance, the flicker of a dying neon sign caught my attention. The abandoned motel at the far end of the rest area loomed like a ghostly sentinel. Its windows were boarded up, and the once vibrant sign swung in the breeze, its letters faded and barely discernible. Curiosity compelled me to investigate further. I approached the motel, my footsteps echoing in the emptiness. The door swung open with a reluctant creak, revealing the lobby frozen in time. Dust-covered furniture and faded wallpaper spoke of a place that had witnessed the ebb and flow of travelers, now a forgotten relic of the past. As I ascended the creaking staircase to the second floor, a feeling of unease settled in. The narrow hallway was lined with doorways that seemed to lead to nowhere. The musty air clung to my skin as I passed room after room, each one locked and seemingly untouched for decades. In one of the rooms, I discovered a stack of yellowed postcards and a tattered guestbook. The dates on the entries spoke of a time when this place thrived, a waypoint for weary travelers seeking respite on their journeys. But the entries dwindled, the last one dated years ago, marking the end of an era. As I left the motel and returned to my car, the highway still hummed with distant traffic. I couldn't shake the feeling that I had stumbled upon a liminal space, a forgotten rest area frozen in time. The mundane desolation held a quiet horror, a stark reminder of how quickly places could fall into decay, fading away like the memories of those who once passed through. The abandoned rest area, with its silent vending machines, decaying motel, and forgotten payphone, became a haunting reflection of the transient nature of life, a testament to the inevitability of places slipping into the shadows of neglect and obscurity. Late at night, I found myself driving down this old, worn-out road, surrounded by miles of nothing. The gas gauge on my car decided to hit empty, and I had no choice but to pull into this shady-looking gas station I never noticed before. The place was dimly lit, the buzzing fluorescent lights barely doing their job. The air had this weird, stagnant smell, a mix of gasoline and who knows what. There were a couple of pumps, the kind that looked like they belonged in the 80s. No other cars around, no noise, except the occasional gust of wind. It felt like the world had forgotten this spot even existed. I stepped out of my car, and the automatic bell on the door jingled as I went inside the small convenience store attached to the station. The shelves were half empty, dusty snacks and faded magazines lining the aisles. The cashier's counter had this ancient cash register, the kind you only see in old movies. The guy behind the counter looked as bored as the place felt. He gave me a nod but didn't say anything. I grabbed a pack of gum and a bottle of water, made my way to the counter. The fluorescent lights flickered, casting a weird, intermittent glow over everything. I paid, mumbled a thanks, and headed back to my car. As I pumped gas, I noted the silence around me. No crickets, no distant traffic noise, 
just the low hum of the buzzing lights. I kept glancing around, feeling like I was being watched, but there was nobody there. Just me in this forgotten gas station, in the middle of nowhere. When the tank finally filled up, I hopped back in my car and got out of there. The dim lights on the gas station faded in the rearview mirror, but the memory stuck with me. That lonely place felt like a snapshot in time, frozen and untouched. It wasn't necessarily spooky or haunted seeming, but it sure was unsettling. A reminder that even in the everyday places we pass by, there are spots that time forgot. Places stuck in a kind of limbo between being remembered and being lost to the world. It was getting late, and I was on this road trip through the back roads, trying to shave off some time. The GPS led me to this old diner that looked like it had seen better days. The sign outside was half lit, and the paint was peeling off the walls. The whole place had this vibe, like it existed in a time that was long gone. I pushed the door open, and this bell hanging above it chimed weakly. The inside of the diner was quiet, too quiet. There were a couple of folks hunched over their coffee at the counter, their conversations hushed, like they were sharing secrets they didn't want anyone else to hear. The air was thick with the smell of grease and stale coffee, and the neon lights flickered above the booths, casting a weird glow on the faded checkered floor. A waitress, probably in her 60s, with a face that carried the weight of a thousand stories, came over and handed me a laminated menu. She didn't say a word, but just pointed out a booth by the window. So I ordered a burger and sat there, looking at the empty street. There were no cars passing by, no pedestrians strolling on the sidewalk, just this eerie stillness that made me wonder if the world outside had forgotten this diner even existed. Luckily the food came quick, almost too quick. The burger tasted alright, but there was something off about it. Maybe it was the silence, or maybe it was the dim lighting, but it felt like I was eating in a place that was stuck in time. The people at the counter talked in low murmurs, their faces expressionless, like they were stuck in some kind of trance. I finished my meal, left some bills on the table, and headed for the door. The bell chimed again, and I stepped out into the night. The street was still deserted, and the only sound was the distant hum of a flickering streetlight. As I drove away, I kept looking back at that diner disappearing in my rearview mirror. It wasn't haunted or creepy necessarily, but it had this weird energy, like it existed on the fringes of memory, if that makes sense. It honestly made me wonder how many places like that are scattered across the country, forgotten by time, waiting for someone to stumble upon them and feel the weight of their untold stories. Late at night, I found myself wandering through an old, rundown shopping mall. The place was on its last legs, and the flickering fluorescent lights overhead made it look even more depressing. Most of the stores were closed or boarded up, and the ones that were open had this air of desperation about them. At one point I strolled past these dusty mannequins in the shop windows, their clothes outdated, and the whole place reeked of mold. There was this low hum of some malfunctioning AC unit, making the atmosphere feel even more stale. Honestly, it was like stepping into a relic from a time when malls were the place to be. As I kept walking, I noticed these faded signs pointing to places that probably didn't exist anymore. Arcades, bookstores, and a food court that had seen better days. The tile floor was cracked in places, and the echoes of my footsteps bounced off the empty storefronts. I tried to shake off this weird feeling that someone was watching me, but there was nobody around. It was just me and the lingering memories of this once thriving shopping spot. Of course the escalators were stationary, frozen mid-ascent like some weird art installation. I took the stairs instead, half expecting them to give way under my weight. Up on the next floor, it got even emptier. I spotted a janitor pushing a mop bucket, but he didn't acknowledge me, he just kept his head down. The air smelled like cleaning chemicals, mixing with the mustiness of the place. I passed by a closed down electronic store, the TV still in the display window showing static. In the middle of the mall, there was this dimly lit seating area. The plastic plants were all yellowed, and the benches looked like they hadn't been sat on in years. I took a seat, and that's when things got really weird. The ambient mall noise, the hum of the lights, the distant chatter, suddenly stopped. It was dead silent, and I felt this chill crawling up my spine. I got up and tried to shake it off, but the silence lingered. I made my way to the exit, passing by these darkened hallways that led to who knows where. The automatic doors creaked open, and I stepped out into the cool night. As I looked back at the fading mall, I couldn't help but feel like I'd walked through a graveyard of consumerism. It wasn't a haunted house or anything, but the emptiness and decay had a way of getting under your skin. The kind of place that reminded you that everything, even the bustling heart of commerce, could end up abandoned and forgotten. 
One time a few years ago, I decided to explore this abandoned airport, a place that used to bustle with people, but now it was just a ghost town. The automated doors screeched as I pushed through, and the place smelled musty, like old carpet and stale air. The arrival and departure boards were frozen in time. The last flights listed were from who knows when. The baggage claim area was a sea of abandoned luggage carts, and the conveyor belt stood still, like they had forgotten what it was like to actually move. Walking down the endless corridors, I could hear the echoes of my own footsteps against the cold, tiled floor. The departure gates were closed, and the shops that once sold duty-free goods were now just dark, empty spaces with dusty windows. The boarding lounges were eerie. Rows of empty seats faced these giant windows that overlooked the tarmac. The planes parked there were covered in a layer of grime, like they hadn't moved in years. It felt like I had stepped into the aftermath of some kind of evacuation, a place abandoned in a hurry. The air was heavy with a kind of silence that made my ears ring. Every now and then, the wind would howl through the gaps in the terminal windows, creating this weird moaning sound. I half expected to see tumbleweeds rolling through the empty check-in counters. I ventured upstairs to the department level. The security gates were locked up tight, and the metal detectors were silent. The VIP lounges were no different. Plush chairs covered in dust, and the fancy coffee machines had probably brewed their last cup ages ago. The control tower loomed overhead, a silent sentinel watching over the deserted runways. I climbed up the stairs, and from the top, I could see the entire airport spread out below me. It was like looking at a snapshot of a place that had once been alive, but had now faded into this strange, abandoned existence. As I left the airport, the automatic doors whined behind me, closing off the emptiness. It was just me, the echoes of my footsteps, and the distant hum of the wind. The place felt like a time capsule of abandonment, a reminder that even the most bustling hubs of human activity could be left to decay in silence. Back when I was in high school, my friends put me up to exploring this abandoned lingerie store on the outskirts of town. So one Friday night, that's where I went. The faded mannequins in the display windows wore outfits from a time when lace and silk were in vogue. The once vibrant neon sign was missing a couple of letters, leaving a flickering I-N-E hanging in the window. The air inside was heavy with dust and the faint scent of cheap perfume that had long lost its allure. Rows of empty racks lined the aisles, their metal frames squeaking as if protesting the emptiness. The dim overhead lights flickered, casting long shadows over the neglected merchandise. The changing rooms were these dimly lit cubicles with moth-eaten curtains. Mirrors were cracked and the floor tiles were chipped. Lingerie lay scattered on the floor, as if someone had hastily abandoned the place, leaving the merchandise behind. As I walked deeper, the silence became almost suffocating. No chit-chat from customers, no soft music playing in the background, just the creaking of the old floorboards beneath my shoes. The perfume section was really a relic, with rows of half-empty bottles, some of them leaking their sickly sweet scent into the air. Finally, I reached the back of the store, where the clearance section sat like a forgotten graveyard of intimate wear. Clearance bins were toppled over, bras and panties strewn across the floor. It felt like this place had been ransacked, but there was this unsettling order to the chaos somehow. I noticed a narrow staircase leading down to the basement. But why not, right? The air down there was even heavier, and the dim light bulb hanging from the ceiling barely did its job. Rows of storage boxes were stacked haphazardly, dust covers and old receipts scattered around. The silence down there was broken only by the occasional drip from a leaky pipe. It was like I had stumbled into the secret, neglected corner of the store. One corner seemed darker than the rest, and as I approached, I noticed a door slightly ajar. Pushing it open, I found the small, forgotten office. A desk covered in old paperwork, a rotary phone that had seen better days, and a faded calendar from a decade ago. It felt like whoever used to work here had just vanished, leaving behind a time capsule of retail despair. Eventually I left, the rusty bell above the entrance jingling weakly. The street outside was quiet, and I couldn't shake the feeling that the abandoned store held more secrets than the faded mannequins and the neglected merchandise revealed. It didn't come across as haunted, but the emptiness and the echoes of a once bustling business did give this eerie vibe, like it was frozen in time. Also, it seemed to be waiting for someone to unravel its untold stories. <laughs>